Hello, and welcome back to A Gross of Physics. Today is day eight. We will discuss the big five equations of kinematics. We've already discussed the first three, and kinematics, as you remember, is the description of motion. And we can describe motion in many ways. We can describe it in terms of uh, graphs. We can draw. Uh, we could draw a picture. We could take a video to describe the motion. But in this case, we're trying to describe the motion mathematically using equations. And we're going to be able to explore the initial velocity of an object, the final velocity of an object, the displacement of an object, um, the acceleration, um, and, and be able to determine uh, what those values are at any given moment during a, uh, an event, whatever that event happens to be. Now, the three equations we've already dealt with are the equation for speed or velocity, which is V equals D over T. We've dealt with the equation for average um, velocity during uniform acceleration, which is average velocity equals VI plus VF over 2, which is a strict average. You're just averaging the two values for initial and final. And we've also discussed the acceleration equation, which is A equals delta V over delta T. It's the rate of change of velocity. or the rearranged equation, which is VF, final velocity, equals VI plus AT, acceleration times time. Now, throughout our discussion of kinematics, we'll see that we're going to start problem solving a lot more at this point. And problem solving will allow us to solve for any of the characteristics of an object. It could be the initial velocity, it could be the average velocity, the acceleration, the time, the displacement, what, what have you. The problem is some situations you don't have all the information you may need. So the three equations we have so far are not enough in order to solve um, problems that may require different variables or different unknowns. So what we have are two equations that are derived from the first three. What I like to do is I like to call the equations equation one, two, three, four, and five for the big five. And a lot of textbooks are or physics programs will discuss the kinematics equation as the big five. In the reference table, it's the first five equations on the back of the reference table in the mechanics section. Well, equation one is the equation for velocity or speed, V equals D over T. Equation two is the average velocity, V bar equals VI plus VF over two. Equation three is VF equals VI plus AT, the acceleration equation. Now, those are our base equations. The other two are derived. Now equation four is derived from uh, the combination of equation one, two, and three. Equation one and two can be uh, set equal to one another. They both share a common variable of average velocity, and they can be set next to each other. Well, you can combine that combined equation, equation one and two, with equation three to form what we call equation four, what I like to call equation four. And the equation is D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. What I'd like to do is show you where that equation comes from. I'll show you a derivation on the whiteboard showing the combination of equation one and two. And then finally, the, um, the simplified equation, which we are going to call equation four. Now, equation four will probably be the most common equation we use in this course. Um, it allows us to solve for the displacement the initial velocity, the acceleration, or the time having one of those uh, unknowns. So three knowns and one unknown. Finally, equation five can be derived by combining equation four with equation three. Sometimes we don't have the time available. And what you'll notice is each one of these equations has a different um, variable missing. Some problems we may be missing the um, displacement. So we have an equation, equation three, where displacement's not needed. Some problems may not have the final velocity. Well, that would be equation four. Some problems may not have time, and that would be equation five. So if we combine equation four and three, we can come up with equation five. Now equation five is VF squared minus VI squared equals two AD. And that will allow us to solve any problem where time is not given. 
Um, we could do most of these problems using equation one, two, and three in multiple steps. But as we add more steps to a problem, we increase the likelihood of getting something wrong. So what I like to do is simplify the process by trying to use the equation that will allow us to get the answer in as few steps as possible. Now, there are more than one ways to, to kill a cat. So we can uh, determine a, a, an answer using different methods. One person may use equation one, then two, then four. Somebody else may use equation one, then four, then five. Um, but I like to use the path of least resistance, the path that is uh, as quick as possible. So what I like to do is determine the equation that will get me the answer the quickest and then find the answer from that. What I'd like to do is show you the derivation for equation five as well. Um, that will at least show you that this isn't a magic equation just, just uh, invented out of thin air. Um, it is just a combination of previous equations that we've dealt with. Now this, this day is not very um, content uh, intensive. Um, we really already have most of the equations. I would like to show you the derivation, which will take a few minutes. But in terms of mathematics, in terms of content, in terms of terminology, there's not much to today. And that's because as we move forward, we're going to be getting into some really deep problem solving. Um, the course is going to be very uh, active for the student at this point moving forward for the next few days, for the next few weeks uh, even, and you're going to be solving a lot more problems. And what we'll find is that the lecture sections of each day may be less, but then the problem solving will become uh, more. And I want each student to realize that this is a process. This is not something that you understand right away. This is not something that will um, click in your head necessarily on the first shot. Some students will understand it uh, quicker than others, but I want you to realize that the only way to get better at this is by practice. And the purpose of homework, the purpose of classwork, the purpose of problems to solve is to get better at problem solving. I will show you a certain way that I've solved problems, but many of these problems I've solved for 15 years. I've been solving physics problems for well over 20 years. So I have found a way that I'm able to solve these problems more readily and more easily for myself. It makes sense to me. Every few years I have a student show me a completely new way to solve a problem that I never even thought of. So it's important to realize that um, although my method may be just that, my method, you may find a way that um, allows you to understand these problems that we're about to solve a little quicker for you, a little easier for you. It may take more steps, but I have certainly been known to find a circuitous path to find an answer, a path that um, students have often found a much uh, shorter, shorter way to do. Uh, classic examples, a few years ago I had solved a problem that took pages and pages of, of notes. Um, algebraically it was very difficult. I was combining different equations into one another and a student was able to show me how to solve the problem in three steps. And I had been solving the same problem the long way, if you will, for many years before this, uh, this student showed me the, the quicker path or the shortcut. Um, but what's important to realize is that over the next few weeks, um, you're going to experience some difficulty with some of these problems. I'm going to try to start with easier problems and ramp up the difficulty as we move. But if you find that it's difficult to solve certain problems, uh, try to go back to it after a little break and see if you can look at it from a different point of view. The important things are the problem solving steps I'm going to give you uh, in tomorrow's discussion. So that concludes today's lesson. I thank you, and this is Mr. Predewicki for A Gross of Physics. All right, let's derive some equations. <clears throat> and remember folks, never drink and derive. It's very dangerous. Now in this case, equation four is gonna be the combination of equations one, two, and three. We're going to set equation 1 equal to equation 2 because they're both average velocity. d over t equals vi plus vf over 2. 
Now derived equations are useful because they eliminate one of the variables that we may or may not have in a certain problem. So we're gonna take this combination and solve it for VF. So 2D over T minus VI is going to equal VF. I cross multiplied the two and then subtracted the VI over. We're gonna take that and substitute it into equation three, which is VF equals VI plus AT. So I'm gonna take the 2D over T minus VI equals VI plus AT. I'll subtract, or I'll add the VI to both sides. So I'll take this VI, I'll add it over here. That would make it 2D over T equals 2VI plus AT. I guess I'll multiply the whole thing by T to eliminate this T here, which effectively just brings the T to the other side. 2D equals 2VIT plus AT squared. Now, the reason this doesn't look like the final equation is because we then take two and divide every term by two to eliminate the twos here and here, and then we end up with our half term. So these disappear, and we're left with our equation four, which is D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. Now, wasn't that fun? Now, we have equation four, which is D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. And we need to find out where equation five comes from. Well, what we're gonna do is take equation one and solve it for D. So it's gonna be D equals V bar times T. Then we're gonna take equation two and replace the V bar. So it'll be D equals VI plus VF over two times T. Well, equation five doesn't have time in it. So what we're gonna do is try to eliminate the time. And the way we do that is solve equation three for T. In order to solve equation three for T, we have VF equals VI plus AT. So we're gonna subtract the VI over and divide by A. Substitute this in for T. So we have D equals VI plus VF over two, and that's all multiplied by VF minus VI over A. At this point, we need to FOIL. And if you remember that from math class, we're gonna take these two and do first, outside, inside, and last. And when we do that, of course the 2A is gonna multiply on the bottom, you'll end up with VF squared plus VFVI minus VFVI minus VI squared, all over 2A. These terms subtract, and you're left with D equals VF squared minus VI squared over 2A. Multiply both sides by 2A and we have our VF squared minus VI squared equals 2AD. And that's what we're gonna call equation five. You had to have fun on that one.